in our church. As you can tell, kindness is a little contagious, isn't it? Somebody saw somebody else do something kind, so it prompted them to do something kind. Now, kindness does come from this sometimes, but we know the fruit of the spirit of kindness comes from the Holy Spirit, right? Kindness. This is uh, sometimes a hard thing to do, isn't it? But hopefully, by the time we leave here today, I have to tell you, through, during, when, I was, when I was studying for this, <coughs> I was talking to somebody and I said, man, I just can't wait to go do something for someone. I mean, I was studying this, it's like, I, I, I just want to go to the gas station and pay for somebody's stuff behind me, you know? I mean, it's just, that was just, it was getting me excited because kindness will get you excited because you know what kindness does? I know we're trying to bless somebody else, but every time I try to bless somebody else, you know who ends up blessing? This guy. <laughs> right? But so often we forget that, right? We, we forget that. We forget how big of a blessing it is to be a blessing. And so we just kind of, things come, opportunities come up and we, right, no, I don't feel like doing that. Or no, I don't feel like doing that. And then we don't do it. And then we're like, man, I just don't, it just doesn't feel good to be a part of this church anymore. And man, you know, and everything. And then we, we just want to leave, right? But when we get involved, you know what happens? Something's inside of us like, this is really awesome. This feels really good, right? Yeah. I love being a part of this. Man, this is such, you know, I, I know 80 kids just got backpacks full of school supplies. And my goodness, I got so much more than they did. Right? I mean, it's just amazing how life-changing it can be for the giver more than the one who's receiving. Praise God. You know, Jesus was the epitome of kindness. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, did Jesus do kind? Did anybody do kindness better than Jesus? Because I want, I want to explain to you what kindness looks like because a lot of us may not understand what kindness looks like. A lot of it was in this video. Kindness in this video was impromptu, or it, it, was, it wasn't impromptu, I'm sorry, but they, they just saw a need and they met it, right? That's, that's really what kindness is all about. You see a need and you do it. You do something about it. And also, kindness doesn't expect anything in return. You notice how they did it? They never knew it. They'd probably never see that person again. That's what it's about, isn't it? Kindness doesn't, oh, well, if, if you do this, then I'm going to do that. But Jesus was the epitome of kindness. First of all, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So our kindness is not dependent on whether or not somebody likes us. Or somebody is treating us well. We understand that? Jesus' kindness was not dependent upon whether or not somebody treated us right. Or treated Him right. Right? Okay, because Jesus kind of went through some things. You see, when He had been beaten, when He had been spit on, when He had been mocked, when He had had a crown of thorns crushed on His head, when He had been when he had his feet and his hands pierced, when he had been whipped with a lead tip whip. Okay, read that. It's in Matthew. A lead tip whip. Okay, a whip isn't bad enough, but it had lead on the end of it. You know what lead does when it hits you after it's whipping around? It tears your flesh apart. Okay, if you've seen The Passion of Christ, there's a pretty, pretty good description of that. All while being accused falsely. Okay, he was going through all this because he was a few accused falsely by the people around him. Jesus went through all of that. And what were the words that he said on the cross? Father, forgive me. For they don't know what they do. If that's not kindness, I don't know what is. When he even said to the disciples, I could call a thousand legions of angels and they could just wipe them out right now. He had that power in his hands. Did you know there's times when we have power in our hands to hurt? And we have the choice. 
don't we? We have the choice whether or not we're going to use the tool of kindness, the fruit of kindness in our life, or if we're going to allow that power to hurt someone to come forth from our lives. Jesus had a choice, didn't he? I know many of you are thinking, well, I'm not Jesus. Well, you know you're not, but that's who we're striving to be like, isn't it? Right? Christians means little Christ. Okay, we're walking around trying to be like Jesus. That's who we're striving to be like. That's our standard for living as, as Christians. Okay, we can't make excuses and say, well, Jesus, I wasn't you, so I just didn't do it your way. I don't think that's going to be acceptable. No, Jesus is going to say, hey, you should have tried harder. You should have tried harder to do it my way because my way was the standard for living. So, as you saw probably on the, on the sign a lot, I know somebody mentioned something to me. I think it was Zach. He said, kill him with kindness, huh? And he just kind of snickered underneath his breath. You know, I don't know what that meant, but you know. <laughs> but you know, kindness. Kindness is a, is a wonderful thing. And you know, kindness, here's the thing about kindness in the Bible. is It's used as kindness, it's used as honor, and it's used as love. Many different times. You look at different translations, they, they make kindness either love or honor. In many different translations. You know, honor just happens to be one of the five things that we feel like we need to have in this church in order to be the church that loves you first. So I guess kindness would kind of go along with that, wouldn't it? And you know, kindness starts right here. If we can't be kind to each other, you know, these, of course, this is our family, right? The body of Christ. If we can't be kind to each other, who can we be kind to? I'm not saying we always make it easy, but again, our kindness should not be dependent upon how somebody treats us or how somebody acts towards us. So, we've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness is where we're at now. Here's the thing about the fruits of the Spirit. Okay, did you know that we, we are always filled with something in our lives? You understand that? We're always filled with something. I get to choose what I'm being filled with. Okay, so... If I'm filled with the things of the world, I'm filled, filled with the flesh, I'm filled with all those things, there's something that has to happen before I can be filled with the Spirit to produce the fruit that I need to produce. There's something that needs to happen. First, what needs to happen is I need to be tipped upside down, I need to be empty. Okay, and being empty is not always a pleasant thing for us to happen to us, right? Okay, hey God, I know you don't like this stuff, so I know you're going to turn me upside down, you're going to shake me a little bit, you know, make sure it's all out, out of me. So I can be filled up with what I need to be filled up with. So I hope that you're willing, that we're all willing, that I'm willing, to be empty today. So that we can be filled with the right things. The things the Spirit wants us to be filled with. I have to tell you, I don't know how many of you guys had patience this last week after, we, after I preached on it. Was it how many had a, a challenge where, you, where you're like, okay, this is really trying my patience. <laughs> Anybody? Yes, I did. I did it. I have, to, I have to be honest. I, I don't know if I passed or not. <laughs> but you know what I did? I asked for forgiveness. And I did better the next day. But you know what? Isn't that what happens? I'm sure, I'm sure tomorrow that kindness is going to be... Somebody's going to treat me badly and I'm going to be like, Hey, it's not dependent on how they treat me. I'm going to have to be reminded of that. I'm going to have to be kind anyway. You know, the, many of these fruits, we're going to see things begin to happen in our lives. And it's, it's, it's not to defeat you. It's not so God can point at you and be like, Oh, you just preached on that. You failed. Okay, that's not God. <laughs> All right. But it's more of Him teaching us, Him molding us, Him making us into what He wants us to be. Yes, we may fail, we may fall down, we don't, we don't let that keep us down. We get back up, we brush ourselves off, we ask for forgiveness, and we do better the next time. Right? Okay? If one person got rotten fruit from your tree, okay, that doesn't mean all the other fruit has to be bad. Okay? You can just, you can prune your tree, so to speak, 
And you can let that fruit be healthy the next time they come around. Praise God. Let, the, let, let God prune the tree. He does a good job with that. <clears throat> if you haven't figured that out yet. Alright, so Ephesians chapter 4 is, is the first scripture we're going to share this morning. It's found in verse 31 and 32. 31 and 32. It says, get rid of all bitterness. Okay, this is the emptying part. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Okay, get rid of it. Don't let it be a part of you. Okay, does anybody under, not understand what it means to get rid of? Okay, that means to dispose of it, to throw it away. And then it says in verse 32, instead, okay, how many know what instead means? It says, okay, you just got rid of that, now here's some things to take the place of. Instead, instead, these are the things that will take the place of. Be kind to each other. Did you hear that? Be kind to each other. Turn to the person sitting next to you and say, be kind to me. <laughs> Arwen and I had a discussion this morning when they walked in, so I know that's hard for him this morning. <laughs> he likes to pester his wife just like I do. Not his wife, but my wife. <laughs> he did a good job of that yesterday, too. <clears throat> All right. This says, be kind to each other. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Now why, why would Paul in the book of Ephesus, why would he write to the church, to the church, did you hear that? Why would he write to the church to be kind, to get rid of all this other junk, and to be kind and forgiving? Why would he write to the church, right? To get rid of all this stuff. See how you get this? He's writing to a church. See, some of us may be thinking, man, that's you're talking to the church. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> okay, we're talking to the church. Paul wrote this letter to the church to get rid of all this stuff. Be kind, forgiving one another. The church needs to hear this, right? The church needs to hear this. Because we're the ones who's going to carry this out. Right? If I go out there and I tell, <clears throat> I go to Walmart and I say, hey, I go to all the cash, be kind to each other. They're going to look at me like, what are you talking about? Right? But here, we understand. That's who we're supposed to be. Right? Even though we fail sometimes, that's who we're supposed to be. You know, I, I told you that these fruits, they just kind of trickle down. And love is kind of at the top of the waterfall and it's just pouring all the way over all the other ones. Because you know what, you know what 1 Corinthians 13 says? It says, love is patient, love is kind. <clears throat> Man, we just keep going back to this word love. Love is, isn't love a beautiful thing? Okay, it really is if it's really love, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing. Now, I think about that, that word love, and I think about God being love, and I think about love being patient, love being kind. And, and, you know, my mind actually went to this this week, and I was like, God, you know, I know that you're patient, you're kind, I know that you're, you are love itself. I mean, that's who you are, you're love. And, and I, I was thinking about Jesus going to the temple and turning tables over and, and doing all these things. And I thought, man, you know, that didn't look like an act of kindness to me. You know, I was like, but then he, he just spoke to me and he said, do you understand how patient I was with those people? Do you understand how many times I told them not to buy and sell in that temple? And they just continued to do it. They continued to ignore me. I was so patient. I was so merciful with them. And the day that Jesus showed up, it wasn't like it was the first time that Jesus had ever seen it. 
He, was, he had been very patient, very merciful, very kind in the past. But this day, he was fed up. He was tired of seeing this junk happen. And he goes in, he starts turning tables over. And he made a statement. He said, my father's house shall be a house of prayer, which you have made it in a thief. You see, Jesus' kindness was the fact that he established for us today the meaning of this house. Right? He reaffirmed the meaning of this house. This is a house of prayer. <coughs> this is a house of buying and selling, a house of cheating people. This is a house of prayer. So, Jesus in his ultimate kindness showed us what this house is really for. Isn't that awesome? I know many of us would think, well, you know, you could have done it a different way. Well, you know what? Jesus was perfect and we're not. So I guess you know, he did it the perfect way. Right? <laughs> so. <clears throat> we talked about Galatians chapter 5 and what the Spirit produces. And I hope that, you know, as we go down this list, people are kind of flipping through. I hope people aren't flipping through the Bible during the week before, and they're like, yeah, I don't think I want to be there this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kindness, you know. I'm not sure if I want to hear about that. I think I'll skip this Sunday, you know. Did you know, I know many of us are thinking, you know, we see the fruits of the Spirit, is the, the Holy Spirit is the one who produces these kind of fruits. And, like, and I, you may be thinking, you know, I've seen kind people that don't know Jesus. You may be thinking that. I've seen kind people that don't know Jesus. But here, I want you to, I want you to understand something about that. The kind people that don't know Jesus are you always usually like this at the end. Okay? They, they're looking for something. They're looking for a return. They're usually looking for something to come back to them. Not always, but most of the time, they're looking for something. So, kind people that don't know Jesus. How do, how do we explain that? All I can say is this video, maybe. It's contagious, right? A, a spirit-led person was kind. And they saw an act of kindness and it just led them to be active, be kind to somebody else. But kindness that is being talked about here is not the kind that happens from being a good person. Okay? Did you know good people don't go to heaven? Good saved people go to heaven. Yeah. Okay? I just want us all to understand that. Good people don't go to heaven. Good saved people go to heaven. Amen? Amen. All right, you can be as good as you want to, but if you ain't saved, you ain't going. That's what the Bible says, right? Okay, Jesus is the, the offering for our sins. It says, but this kindness that the Spirit produces happens when people are rude or mean to us. Okay, do you understand that? The kindness that comes from the world, well, they were kind to me, so I'm going to be kind to them. The kindness that comes from the Spirit, you were rude to me and I'm going to be kind to you. She wasn't really rude to me. But, but what I'm saying is that's, what, that's where the Spirit produces kindness in us. That's the difference. Okay? Now, but again, I want to reaffirm, kindness looks a lot like Jesus hanging on the cross and Him saying, Father, forgive us. We don't know. That's what kindness looks like. If you need a picture today. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, gives us some more admonition in our lives. It says in Colossians 3, verse 12, Since God chose you. Mm, just, just think that to about yourself right now. God chose me. You can say that to yourself, you can say it to the person next to you, I don't care, but just, just think about that. God chose me to be holy people He loves. You, because He chose, since He chose you, excuse me, because He chose you, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, 
and patience. You must clothe yourself. Okay, what if we woke up in the mornings? What if we woke up? Okay, does any of us think about putting these on before they leave the house? Okay, does anybody ever think about that? I would hope not. Nobody walks out of their house and be like, mm, I forgot to get dressed this morning. Oh my goodness, I better run back inside. Okay, nobody does that. But yet so often, we walk out the door and we forget to clothe ourselves with love, tender heart of mercy, patience, all these things. We forget to put that clothing on. And you know what happens? We walk out and we don't look at ourselves and be like, I forgot to put on love and tender heart. No, we just keep on walking. Then we meet somebody and we're the first person we see, we're just like, they're like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, hey, what's up? Don't bother me. I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> right? <laughs> See, I can say I don't drink coffee, so. <laughs> Proverbs 3.3 3 says, Never let loyalty and kindness lead you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. You see, these are things that it shouldn't even be, it shouldn't even be something that we have to, to even think about, right? This should be something we're putting on. When we're putting our clothes on, we should be saying that prayer, God, I'm, God, I'm, I'm going to make this shirt my kindness today. God, I'm going to make these pants my, my tender heart. I'm going to make, I'm going to make these shoes my patience today, Lord. God, I'm putting these things on because God, I want to be reminded of how I'm supposed to be because I'm in love with you. And I want to represent you well. What are you putting on every day? What are you putting on? Because the Bible says, never let loyalty and kindness lead you. Is it leading us? You see, this isn't something that we wear just when we feel like it. Well, I feel like being kind today. It's a good day for you. <laughs> right? <laughs> No, we don't get to just do it just when we feel like it. It's something we wear because we're followers of Christ. Daily denying ourselves. Daily denying ourselves. That's what, that, that's what that scripture says. It says daily take up your cross. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Daily deny yourself. And allow Jesus to shine through you. Kindness. Okay, this is not, I want, I want to explain something. This is not what kindness that comes from God looks like. Brandon, can you help me out for a second? Okay. Yes, please. Just stand up here. Okay. All right. Here we go. If you'll turn around. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to scratch Brandon's back this morning. <laughs> All right. Now, Brandon, will you turn around and scratch my back, please? <laughs> All right. See, that's not that's not kindness. See, this is kindness. We're not. Kind. This is kindness. I'm gonna scratch Brandon's back, and I'm just gonna walk away. There you go, buddy. You see, that's what kindness looks like. It comes from the Spirit of God. It's not you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. That's not kindness. That's not the kindness that comes from the Spirit of God. It's the kindness that comes from the Spirit of God. Says, here, let me scratch your back. I know you'll never repay me, but you know what? That's okay. I'm all right with that. Because I have rewards that I'm laying up in heaven that are far greater than anything you could give me right now. But so often we're a society, we're a society that wants something in return. Well, I gave them this and they didn't do nothing. They didn't give me no thank you card. Right? Where's my thank you card at? I, I work like a dog for them. Right? We want that thank you card. Man, it's good to get a thank you card, but if you don't, don't lose your salvation over it. Amen? Don't leave your church over it. Praise God. I'm not saying anybody's done that. I'm just saying. Man. The kindness that the Spirit wants to produce in our lives, it doesn't expect anything to return. I want to conclude. I say conclude. You guys hear that all the time. You're like, yeah, right. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to conclude with this scripture. 
this morning. It's found in Luke chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, it would be great. If you don't, it's right up here. Luke chapter 6. It says, but to you who are willing to listen. Who's willing to listen this morning? Okay, Jesus is speaking to you. To you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Hey, all you that said you're willing to listen, y'all want to put your hands down your arms. I'm glad you're willing to listen. Do good. Listen, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Anybody ever done that? Everybody got on their prayer closet and like, man, God, I, I just want to pop that person's head off. But God, bless them. Just bless them, God. Yes? All right, that's good. That's self-control. We're going to get to that. <laughs> Pray for those who hurt you. Man, that's, these are hard things to do. I want you to understand, this doesn't come easy. This takes discipline. Spiritual discipline. Okay, we all need to have discipline in our lives. Discipline is a, a great thing to have. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Oh, you want my coat? Oh, here you go. Let me take this off. Here. Okay. Give to anyone who asks you. When things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. You know, I have, I have to tell you that things. Did you know money and stuff are the biggest dividers in our lives? <laughs> They'll divide people over and over again. It's, and it's Satan, you know the thing about Satan is he never gets new tools. He just uses money and stuff over and over again. He's like, hell, oh, watch this. I'm going to divide this family. <laughs> I'm going to divide this church. Watch this. Money and stuff. Boom. I'm going to divide these friends. Money and stuff. Boom. It's done. Right? You know why? Because we put more value on something rather than someone. I'm more kind to this microphone sometimes <laughs> than I am to someone else. Isn't that sad? Do to, do to others as you would like them to do to you. So, here, here's, the, here's the story here, right? It says... Do to others as you'd like them to do to you. Okay? Say somebody spits in my face. If I want them to spit in my face again, I guess I could spit back in their face. Right? But if they spit in my face and I hug them, I guess then I want to hug the next time instead of a spit in the face. Right? Okay? Do we understand this? Okay? Do to others as you want them to do to you. If I want somebody to be kind to me, I can't be rude to them. If I want them to be rude to me, I can be rude to them. Are we starting to understand this? Do to others as you want others to do to you. I, I said that was going to be my scripture this night. Sorry. <laughs> this is not the kindness that is looking for a return. This is the kindness that is being lived out because we love God and we love people. That's it. Okay? I've always, I've always said, if you, if you will let your motivation be that I just want to love someone, you'll, you'll never be like Daniel. You'll never be like Daniel. If that's your motivation, I just want to love somebody. I just want to love people. But that would be your motivation. Not the response. Don't let your, the response be, to, be your motivation. Just let your motivation be that you want to love someone. You'll never be like Daniel. Because you, you love. You choose to love that person. And when you've done it, you complete your task. The thing about kindness is it will always cost us something. Do we understand that? Kindness is always going to cost you something. It will either cost you, it'll cost you your pride sometimes. 
It'll cost you sometimes your finances. It'll cost you your energy. It'll cost you your resources. It'll cost you something. Okay, kindness is never free to give. Yeah, it, it seems free. Hey, I want to help you up or whatever. But it, it's still, even if you help somebody up, it just costs my energy. It got, costs a little bit of time to stop and help them back up. Doesn't it? It will always cost you something. <clears throat> Think of the effort it takes to love your enemies, to pray for those who hurt you. It cost, that, that's going to cost you something. <coughs> but if you're willing to pay the price, just like Jesus did, Jesus was willing to pay the price. Why? So people can be saved. Am I willing to pay the price so people can be saved? <clears throat> what about the person that slaps you on one cheek? What will it cost you to turn the other way? Well, it's good. definitely going to cost me more pride. If somebody slaps me on the cheek, man, it's, it's going to be everything I got to not slap them back. Amen? Because I think I told you several weeks ago that this is something that was very demeaning in the Jewish culture. You slap somebody, they like a dog to you. The person that made your coat, well, what's it going to cost you? It's going to cost you a coat and your shirt. We slip. That's what Jesus says. <laughs> but what are we willing to pay in the way of kindness to influence people for the kingdom of God? What are we willing to pay in the way of kindness to influence people for the kingdom of God? How much are you willing? How far are you willing to go? What cost are you willing to shell out in order for people to see Jesus Christ in this world? Final scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 12. It says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Rather, give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The NL New Living Translation on that last verse says, Do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil with good. And then can I just say this? Evil can conquer you if you allow it to. Evil can come against you and it can conquer you. It can conquer your witness. It can conquer who you are in Christ if you let it. But instead, you can conquer that evil by returning it, returning good for it. It's our choice. It's our choice. And then, verse 9 and 10, I want to read this real quick. It says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, in honor, giving preference to one another. You know what preference is? No, Scott, you go first. No, really, I want you to go first. That's preference. I want you to have this. No, really, you take it. No, you have it. No, it's the last one. Yeah, that's why I want you to have it. Preference. Kindness. Kindness. I, I believe kindness can change, change. This is one of the huge ways that we can change our community. And I'm telling you, it starts with acts of kindness every day. Not just one big act in an event. But acts of kindness every day. When we see people out and about, we say, hey, can I help you with that? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Wow. Thank you. And what if, what if at one time you were being kind and you were wearing your church shirt? Wow. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing, right? But more importantly, we represent Him. More important than this church, right? We represent Him. 
Stand with me this morning. I have a challenge for you this week. I want you to go out of your way to be kind. Whatever that looks like. I want to hear, a matter of fact, we may just have a testimony service next Sunday. If there's enough random acts of kindness being done this week. We may just have a bunch of testimonies of kind acts that you all did. And we'll just talk about them all service long. And I'm not saying, hey, what the, the act is, the thing is I want you to testify about is what you did to be kind. Not the response. Okay, maybe they didn't respond. Maybe they just went about their merry way. Maybe they didn't even say thank you. And maybe that got your blood to boil. They didn't even tell me. Pastor, Pastor wanted me to be kind. I was kind. They didn't even say thank you. What is going on here? Man, kindness doesn't really pay. No, but it'll cost you something. Okay? Yeah, it may not pay anything. It costs Jesus' his life. Right? It may not bring any kind of return. I don't want to promise you a return this week as you go about and do your act of kindness. But I will promise you this. You will have a reward waiting for you. Where moth and rust cannot destroy where thieves can't break in and steal, there will be a reward waiting for you. Is that what you want? Do you desire that reward more than instant gratification here? It's our choice, right? Kindness. Kindness. It's just such a pleasant word, isn't it? Kindness. So let me pray over you this week as you go out and as you make the choice to be kind, even to the people that are so ugly, right? I'm telling you, tomorrow you may meet somebody that you haven't met in years and you're thinking, and this person is the meanest, greediest, just makes your face want to cringe up and your fist clench up. And you may meet that person tomorrow, all because we talked about <laughs> kindness today. But I want you to understand, the Spirit of God will remind you how you need to act in that moment. If you will listen. Okay, that's, the, that's the key right there. We must listen. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, God, for your standard. Thank you for your love. Thank you for equipping us, God. God, you have not given us these things, Lord God, without equipping us. You've not given us this teaching today, God, without equipping us, Lord God. But Lord, you have given us the Spirit of God that produces these fruits in us, Lord. So, Father, I pray, God, for every person in this place, Lord God, every person, God, that, that has the Spirit of God, Lord, I pray that they will choose, they will make the choice to yield to the Spirit of God in their lives, Lord, as they go through this week, as they are, they are desiring God to be kind. I pray, God, you give them opportunities. God, to show kindness to others. To love them unconditionally. To treat them well. To treat them as they would want to be treated. God, I pray right now, God, you would help every single one of us, God. Because, Lord, I believe, God, that trials will come our way. That people will be mean. People will be rude. But God, we are on a mission. We are on a mission as a church. We are on a mission as the body of Christ. Representing the kingdom of heaven. We are on a mission to represent you well. And God, I pray right now, God, that every person in this place, God, we will represent you well. Put it in our hearts, God. And Lord, I pray, God, if there's somebody here, Lord, that messes up, I pray, God, that they will not let them, that drag them down, God, but they will pick themselves up, Lord, and they will look for someone else. Or they will look for a way to forgive that person and be kind again. God, we give you praise, Lord, for this great commission that you've given to us to go into all the world. Teaching. All the things that you commanded us. And Lord, kindness is right up there with that. Help us, Lord, to show the love of Jesus Christ to everyone we meet. 
We love you. We praise you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. Thanks for being here.